Why you cut me too deep? I think I'm dying here, man. Welcome to the 3B Video Deep Cut Podcast. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> Aw, yeah. It's that time again for another bi-weekly podcast with your hosts, Rotten Roger DeMarco and... Evil Dead Inks. And you hear what he called me, boss? I ain't no chicken fucker. <laughs> well, I had thought about fucking me some chickens. <laughs> and you pop the head off and you just... Ooh, ooh. <laughs> you, you <laughs> stick your dick in a chicken and go, ah? <laughs> <laughs> No, I think my dick digging no chicken go, ah. You ever think you're digging a chicken Well, two firing two guns in the air and go, ah. <laughs> hey, that's a hot fuzz reference. <laughs> Combined with the Devil's Rejects reference. Uh, well done uh, early in the AMs, sir. <laughs> yep, that's what I do. So on to part two, the Devil's Rejects, the exciting next chapter in the Firefly trilogy. Uh, House of a Thousand Corpses Part Dukes. <laughs> it is leaps and bounds different from the movie we discussed two weeks ago. There's no inverted color palettes, slow motion sequences for reasons unknown other than climactic finishes. Uh, Otis has he's gotten some sun. He's let his mm. hair grow out. We lost a couple of people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lost in the shuffle. <laughs> we decided to go back and be reality based and not an actual like fever dream ending. Or music video. Yeah. yeah. There's actual story here. It's not a pleasant story. It's not a <laughs> it's a stiff fucking drink, but it's it a is. it's a story. Probably uh, bar none his best film. Yeah, I was going to say, would you say this is leaps and bounds better than House of a Thousand Corpses? Like, your your opinion. It's the well, most well-made. Mm-hmm. I, I will say, to me, uh, this is a better film. This, you already said, you know, probably Rob Zombie's best film. Uh, I put this movie on a pedestal. I I really enjoy this movie. I was a massive hype beast of a fan when this movie came out. Uh, everything from toys, shirts, soundtracks, you know. Big, big supporter of this movie. I bought the soundtrack. That's as far as I went, though. But I did go see it in the theater, and I saw in the theater with an ex who was not a fan of Rob Zombie films at mm. all. So uh, that what was... was that screening like for you? Entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, she actually she arms crossed. No, she uh, she fell for uh, what he was going for at the end of this movie. She was feeling sympathy for the rejects when they're getting stapled pictures to them. Mm. It's a it's a weird line this movie walks, and I think this is the best example for Rob Zombie. Obviously, I said this is his best film, but like he does a very good job of creating gray area characters even if you're supposed to be a good person like uh sheriff Wydell, he has like bad things about him everyone kind of takes crazy and they, they walk this weird uh white trash uh you know whatever this weird line where filthy yeah, Nasty. they could be bad and they can be good. Like you got the bounty hunters; they're obviously uh, they're just criminals, <laughs> you know. I'm a former wrestler DDP and Danny Trejo. Mm-hmm. They are fantastic. Look who's talking, Rondo. <laughs> what a contrast to like five foot nothing, actual guys like probably hardened by nails, Danny Trejo, mm. and then the oldest rookie wrestler in wrestling history diamond dallas page who's i think he's like six foot four six five yoga guy yeah big dude I, let me say this too you know we got a glimpse obviously when when a, a wrestler um is is doing their thing in wrestling they have their mic skills they have they have the things they do they cut the promos they do all of this stuff um we got a glimpse into what Diamond Dallas Page is that? His, that's not his real name. Like Dallas Page is not his real no. name. No, 
So, like, but we got a glimpse into what he was capable of cutting promos, and then he did, you know, uh, Ready to Rumble, and <laughs> he plays a, you know, he's basically just doing a, a higher budget <laughs> wrestling promo. That would have been a great if that was the interview process, as Rob Zombie's like, I saw you working, Ready to Rumble, excellent shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> would you like to be a hired. bounty hunter for my next movie? But it, don't you feel like, he's kind of a natural. I feel like a, a lot of wrestlers... Uh, can transition into acting very well. I mean, obviously, like when you're Hulk Hogan, you're just Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah, so, like, Hulk you're not Hogan a great actor, but you're just, yeah, you're just Hulk Hogan. But I say it's a mix. It's a mixed bag. Like, Hogan it, can't do it. He's Hulk Hogan every time. The Rock, mm-hmm. I mean, he's does good cinema, but he's The Rock in everything. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, it's kind of, he's kind of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's like our new Arnold Schwarzenegger, essentially. Yeah. Um, Cena is okay. Uh, he's still kind of, I haven't seen enough that I would, that I can make a judgment on uh, John Cena. I would give Dave, I think Dave Batista has done it best. Yeah, he's good. He's the most, like, I forget that he was a wrestler in his, mm-hmm. in his bits. And I think he's got the best range. And, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So DDP, uh, He's okay. I yeah, mean, he's, I think he does good. I'm glad for he's what not. He's, he's not doing any wrestling moves. That's always like the first thing. Like, do they have to do one of their fucking moves in it? Mm-hmm. Cool, it's to get a pop out of me, but <laughs> it feels like that. Do the line, Bart. You know why you're fucking here. Do the thing mm-hmm. you do here. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I also think because we talked about this two weeks ago, um, Kane Hodder was the fight choreographer slash stunt coordinator. He should have been one of the bounty in hunters. this movie. And, well, but the, the thing is, if you watch that uh, making of Devil's Rejects, they have, like, a big, long uh, interview with him talking about the scene when Otis uh, kills uh, the the Banjo and Sullivan guys, like, when they're out <laughs> digging up the guns. Yeah. That whole fight scene originally was supposed to have, like, all this crazy, you know, punches and kicks and all this wild stuff. And, and Kane, they rehearsed it and rehearsed it, and then he was like, you know what, like, it doesn't like feel gritty. It doesn't feel real. Let's strip all that away and let's make it like a you're fighting for your life. You know, crotch shots, biting, like choking. Legitimate. The kind of <laughs> yeah, the kind of things that feel truly violent. And this movie with definitely benefits with having Kane be behind all of that stuff because you don't get those like, oh, he got him with the diamond cutter. He scoop slammed him power bomb baby like you know i mean you're gonna get bill mosley thrown through a window my god like, he's got the, the closest cha- he's got the steel chair <laughs> the man's got a family breaking out the the staple gun it's a hardcore <laughs> fucking death well, someone stop the damn movie enough's enough <laughs> uh do you ever feel like that throughout this movie like does it ever I'm, it does hit some like last house on the left. Almost, I spit on your grave. Like ooh, we're about to cross some lines. Does it ever like hit your like moral compass where you're like, no, 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 enough's enough? Yeah, I'd say the entire motel room kind of sequence, like all that's like I could really pass on that. You could just probably cut that out of the movie. Like, dang, gr- gratuitous. Yes, does it strike a chord and an emotion? Is he? Getting what probably he's going for, sure, but like it really clouds the entire movie. So, I, even when I think of Devil's Rejects, instantly that's where my mind is going is a gun in a, in a lady's panties. Mm. See, and I know Bill Mosley had a hard time shooting that because that was like three or four days that hotel sequence, like of them shooting and shooting, and he was really bothered by it. And I think there's like a famous quote Rob Zombie said, like. You know, if art doesn't bother you, it's not doing its job. And something something to that effect, I'm paraphrasing, but I feel like that sequence is important in the movie because at, at that point in the movie, what we've gotten is they're on the run from the law. We've gotten um, Sid Haig having his, like, dream sequence with Ginger Lynn. Great. And then, you know, heading out to meet, meet them at the... Uh, Tahiki Palms Hotel or whatever it's called but like the the amount of violence that we've received thus far is not um, like heavy enough you know they kill the lady steal her car 
uh, Sid Haig headbutts the lady, steals her car, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's very um, standard violence. And we really, really needed, like, to sit down in their roles of, like, their, their whole house is filled with thousands of corpses. They have scrapbooks of things they've done, like, all these nasty, violent things. Women in cages and, like... <laughs> It, and we like are forgetting that because we're having fun because it becomes a road movie. So we yeah. gotta like stick our feet in the sand and go. No, these guys are fucking terrible. We're like, oh, you like Banjo and Sullivan? You like how fun these people are? You like their dynamic? You like what they're doing? Well, it'd be a shame if someone were to fucking massacre them, like seventies exploitation style, like pulling their tits out and like just being filthy, you know? And it kind of like whoop puts you back in the moment at least for me yeah i don't necessarily need it i'll <laughs> got i'll give you i'll give you this much i do like how uh the one dude who's really kind of shit talking the newscast report on the rejects really talking tough like ah they come in here i had fucked them up three ways from sunday <laughs> and then this goes temple. yeah then this goes full bitch mode when it actually they're at the front door they didn't hear mm. him talking shit about them it's just their natural like they're there to we're here to fuck shit up <laughs> mm -hmm. and he is just <laughs> in the fetal position and his woman has to be comforting him so like that i'll give it I like that's a good uh probably more true than not characteristic of yeah. these uh, all these tough talking guys when they're actually really confronted they don't have anything except you know their hands with some skin on it to defend themselves yeah they, they're in the shit and then yeah the uh, fight or flight mode you know it's very they keep it very grounded in reality in this movie which is something that I truly appreciate I know um, you've seen it and I've, I bring it up time and time again uh, another perfect example of that for me is Green Room. You know, yeah. uh, the violence in Green Room, the it's so like unflinching, unforgiving. There's this, you know, they're gonna make this grand escape. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen Green Room. Like they're holed up and they're gonna try and make an escape, and you know, it doesn't give you what a typical like action movie would give you of like, oh, and here's a couple set pieces, a couple scraps, you know they're going to go down or, you know, out on their shield type of deal. It's like, no, as soon as you step out of that room, the guys with the knives and the guns kill you. They have the upper hand. Like it doesn't matter if we're watching your story, your story can be cut short. And, and, and that's what I really like about devil's reach. I'm, I'm the hero of this story. <laughs> that, nope. That does not compute, man. And I love that. Like just unflinching. I don't give a fuck who you're rooting for. Um, <laughs> attitude. When it comes to making movies, um, I always forget that the the bounty hunters just kind of show up, do their thing, and then they just fuck off. They just leave, mm -hmm. and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, what happened to? Oh shit, they just did their job and and left. Like they they get away yeah. unscathed. That's weird to me because they <laughs> even rewatching every time. I'm like, oh, I can't I can't wait to see when they uh, get there. You know, final battle with the rejects, and then I'm, oh yeah, that doesn't fucking happen. They just kind of throw Otis through a window, pull baby out of the tub nude, and uh, they're like, "All right, pay us, fucker. We're our job's done." Yep, you got we, Sid cornered have, there. Yep, I I love that scene too. You're gonna start the killing. Start you best start right it right here. here. Make sure I'm all the way dead though. That's some tough shit. It's this movie is yes. There, there's what I would extremely quotable. That's what I would like more of. Cut ninety eight percent of the hotel room. Yeah. Just extend the fucking scenes with Ken Foray and Sid Haig just talking like I love, I love you, man. I love my cocaine more. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in this movie has such a wonderful dynamic. And I know we talked about it two weeks ago about all the people from this movie we've met. They're all amazing and having them in this movie every it's a gi giant film family you know it's very similar to the adam green movies how we talk about like he works with people he loves mm -hmm. and you got rob zombie and he's just got everybody that's fun and he's doing all these weird reference throwbacks to these other crazy movies that he loves but like everybody's having so much fun and the subject matter is pretty rough which somehow like translates to me 
watching this movie laughing and having a good time even though there's stuff like that hotel sequence and it's that's a tough thing to pull off and that's where I it, I don't know man because I want to be like it's not a fluke right like he, he's a very talented director he that movie is close to perfect and then we get the other Rob Zombie movies. So it's, it's hard. It's hard for me when I watch that movie to go like, man, this is so good. Why? What happened? Why is this, yeah. Why is this so perfect? And then why, why is everything else kind of just feel like he had like a room full of people going, do the Rob Zombie thing. Be, be, be more Rob Zombie. Can you Rob Zombie up that Rob Zombie movie? Like, can you bring these three characters back that you clearly killed the shit out of at the end of this movie? Yeah. Uh, and let me say this. We, we met the majority of this cast in 2013, <laughs> my first convention, my first time meeting you. And did you sit in on that uh, Devil's Rejects panel? I did not. Although it's weird that somebody had posted them on, on the YouTube, both that one and the other time they were both in town. Like the last time Sid was uh, in town, uh, someone posted that panel as well. But I didn't make it into, into I think I stepped in for a hot minute and then I was out. Because it was in the uh, like the lunch room or whatever the hell you want to call yeah, it, the that, banquet hall, the calf. <laughs> yeah, the cafeteria. Um, but there's like a famous part. At least it's famous to me because I was sitting in that room. Uh, someone in the crowd had asked Sid Haig, like, "When are you guys coming back? Like, <laughs> when are the Devil's Rejects coming back?" And in that uh, Q and A, he said, "We can't come back. Do you know why?" And then everybody on the panel went, "Because we're fucking dead." Like they chanted it. In 2013, Sid, hey, because we're fucking dead, and then you fast forward to like 2020 or whatever year that, that was, and then you get like, the sensation they've been asked that a time or two. Yeah, like they they are clearly. I mean, when you saw this in theaters, when you're sitting there and they're playing Freebird and the, the whole goddamn the, song too. <laughs> yeah, the conclusion to the to the Firefly Clan is happening in your face. When when the lights came on and you walked out of the theater, did you go, I think they'll be okay. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they're fucking dead, dude. Uh, yeah. I was like, yeah, they're they're dead. They're dead. They're all messed up. Um, they're Swiss cheese on the fucking mountainside yeah. highway. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't have any any question that, the, yeah, that's, that's the end of the story. That's And, again, that's probably his best shot in this movie. Uh, that's second best for me. Um, I oddly enough, my favorite sequence in the movie, and it's not a knock, even though it sounds like it might be. It's the uh, end credits, even though it's just a helicopter shot just down all these desert roads. Uh, it's real good. It's fantastic, and I love uh, the the song he he chose for his end credits, uh, "Seed of Memory." That's my mm -hmm. favorite on the whole soundtrack. I still have that one on playlist today. Uh, everything about this is fantastic. I could just watch that shit on a loop. Yeah, like a ten-hour loop on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> and it sounds sounds sarcastic, but I was like, no, like the, what's your favorite part of the Devil's Rejects? Like the end credits. <laughs> right. It does sound like fuck that movie. <laughs> yeah. But I know what you mean. It's beautiful, and that's it is. the thing, right? There's a lot of stuff I can't remember. I want to say, um, B.J. McDonnell who also directed Hatchet 3. I want to say he was one of Rob Zombie's camera guys. I could be completely wrong. I know BJ worked on Rob Zombie's Halloween, um, but I feel like BJ had something to do with the cinematography in this movie. Could be wrong. Someone out there will let me know, but there are a lot of shots in this movie where um, there there's clearly... Um, a talented person behind the camera. You know what I mean? Like there's there's clever use of depth of field. There's clever use of color and like staging. Everything is done um, beautifully, which like seems like an afterthought. Like when you watch those 70s exploitation films, they're basically like run and gun, like a dude with a camera just, did you yeah, get it? We, yeah, I think so. We don't have, Whatever. We don't have permits to film here. Get it done quick. <laughs> Fire that gun in this crowd, and then let's get in the fucking van and go. <laughs> it manages to nail that aesthetic, but also, like, be calculated. 
and 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 look really good like i told you before like when we shot tapehead and we had the fight between tapehead and the cop thought that whole time i said you know make it more rob zombie it's got to be like handheld it's got to be kind of jarring that helps kind of sell that violence especially if you have like um very like average stunt work like punches or (laughs) kicks or choking like if the camera is shaking it adds something it it like connects with the viewer you know yeah i was gonna say not not that it's related to that but i uh another shot that looks really good just because it's so far pulled back is the the uh 18 wheeler <laughs> scene oh yeah that's awesome <laughs> which uh, we've seen a good number of people by this point just smashed by heavy machinery <laughs> <laughs> at high speeds this one I feel really hits the realistic aspect of it as in it looks like a country mile of just entrails that this, oh, this yeah. goes and goes and goes we've seen the final destination girl get plowed by a truck fucking uh, dude <laughs> the dude from Bride of Chucky just get annihilated oh. hilarious this one's kind of funny too but it, it does feel the most real mm-hmm. nothing about it feels uh, dummy like which is odd the the exact opposite would be like when we covered the pet cemetery franchise and there's still enough of gage to dig up and <laughs> resurrect <laughs> you, you, you know what i mean yeah gage just has gage has like a little two inch stitching on his forehead bullshit man yeah <laughs> yeah there's nothing left of this woman when she's hit by this truck Mm-hmm. And it's just it's out of nowhere. Good. Like she's just blinded with this skin mask on. She's just kind of running in hysterics. And then you're like, but she, she's out. She, she better look out. She's in the middle of the street. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, at least she's out of her misery. She better look both ways. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, almost a mercy kill. Like, yeah, she's never going <laughs> to, she will not financially recover from this. <laughs> If she had survived, she would have been in a mental institution for sure. Like, she had cracked. Yeah, sharing a bunk with the chick from Friday the 13th, part three. (laughs) 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 Yeah, completely lost it. Um, Yeah, so we leave the hotel, and that's when we we head on over to the... uh, (laughs) Ken Foray's whorehouse. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Whore town, USA. Whore town. (laughs) <laughs> Ken Foray's Island Paradise. Yeah. With his what? He's got two, three women working there. Um, the two that are in that main house. But I feel like we see more when we get that establishing shot. We see some women walking back and forth with some Johns, you know. Mm. But like, uh, the two main, one of them being E.G. Daly. Um. They're they're like the most centric to the plot, but uh, that's a- yeah, Ken Forey. <laughs> and this makes me laugh because uh, like when the when the bounty hunters show up and the the our rejects are hanging with the ladies, uh, the slow motion kill from DDP <laughs> to, to Daily <laughs> just that they cut back to his face and he just has this. Ha, 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 He's ha. just laughing, yeah. But not just not like hysterical laughing, not like chuckling. This just weird as shit. Ha, 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 <laughs> I'm glad that it is a slow motion scene, though, because I... Th- it looks the, cool, um, but his laugh is fucking weird. It's, it's bizarre. Because in that making of, they they show them filming that scene... And, you know, it, it had dialogue and it has all this stuff. But by removing all that dialogue, here we are. We're talking about Rob Zombie not making a music video this time. But there are a couple of, like, montage, music montage Mon- sequences in this montages movie. Montages are fine. It lasts 30 seconds a minute. That's fine. When it lasts 90 mm-hmm. minutes of your 92-minute film, then it's the, then it's a problem. Yeah, it becomes very problematic. It's very distracting. And in this movie, he definitely pulls back on that and does that just occasionally. But the other good thing about Rob Zombie is he's very, um, like, conscious in his music choices. So yeah, they they become iconic. Like you're talking about, you love that end credits, right? Like 
because he is a guy who comes from a, a music video background, making music and all that hooplery. So he's very good with visuals with songs. So I can imagine when he's writing a script and he's thinking this through, that he he's already picking out songs that feel oh yeah proper. He's he's the he's the horror uh, shock cinema version of James Gunn. Yeah, or Edgar Wright. You know, Edgar oh, Wright yeah, is also man. very good at like. Rob Zombie will take the bronze of those three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's not a bad, you know, that's not a bad prize because, no. uh, like I said, there's really good uh, music cues in this movie that kind of amplify those scenes. And I feel like if that scene had played out in regular speed uh, with dialogue and just a score, probably wouldn't have been as awesome, you know, uh, it- uh, with that seasons change and whatever, and getting thrown through the window and takes it down slightly because the gunshots just like the ones that are in the end sequence also in slow motion re- like very CG gunshots yeah. which like I always say those depreciate in value the second you drive it off the lot so yeah they're like drag and drop um, just like effects plates we can do better ones on. today with the minimum yeah. equipment we have now for sure and and that really is about the that and the fire uh, in the end sequence, they're the, they're the things that um, age this film. They're the things when you watch this film, you go, oh, yeah, it looks about like 2005, 2004, 2005 uh, ability. You know, that, that fire is pretty fucking rough. <laughs> Sometimes it looks good, but 99% of the time you're like, Wow. And that's just, I mean, speaking of that fire, that makes me think of Tiny, which we have Tiny open in the movie, which I know that was a rough sequence for the woman. He's just dragging nude through the mm. woods. but Twigs up the butt he and just, everything else. He yeah. just hangs out at the house. He never leaves. And his whole goal in this movie is he just snaps Wydell's neck uh, when he's in his rampage mode. At the very end. And then the the weirdest shit, he just is like, we missed the conversation, I guess, where he's like, I'm going to go back in the house and uh, just hang out. And then, Mm -hmm. yeah. I belong here. Yeah, and Otis is like, we'll come back for you. Like, what? When? Why? Tomorrow. (laughs) How? And he just goes in and the house blows up. I'm just assuming because they've got to kill all the remaining family members we have left because we don't have Grandpa. He actually did die in real life before they got to Mm -hmm. film it. We lost uh, uh, our muscle man. He gets killed at the beginning, which we didn't bring. That whole whole opening is chef's kiss, baby. (laughs) It's real good. Yeah, it's it's not too shabby. Yeah. we get the justice we didn't get at the end of the last movie <laughs> that we were wanting. Uh, we have Leslie Easterbrook in the Karen Black role. She gets abducted, not abducted, she gets uh, arrested. <laughs> abducted. <laughs> kind of abducted. She gets thrown into like this makeshift cell that looks like it's like half a library or storage facility <laughs> that just has Insert rails X-Files over it. Theme. Yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> it feels like Mulder has files of shit down there <laughs> where they have her just kept away. And eventually, yeah, Wydell goes down there and just stabs her. Just, like, fucks her with his knife, essentially. I mean, it's it's weirdly, like, sexual and violent at the same time. No, it's, she, she is a lady of the evening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Has the reputation of it, so, sh- sure. True, yeah. It feels very um, filthy. I guess, you know, it's... It's the licking of the teeth that she does. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> P- pretty pretty gnarly. And, um, all right. We've had a few weird scenes that I've I pulled out. The weirdest mm-hmm. scene in the movie that uh, will definitely... I'll say this a lot when we get to the next film. I'm like, why is this here? I don't get this at all. The film critic sequence. Oh, get that Hollywood loving pussy out of my face. Elvis was in Hollywood. Is this has to only be here because he wants to actually bitch out a film critic on film. 
that's all Maybe. I could potentially think. Because what is the reason for it? What's well, all the deep cuts from the aliases? I guess so. He kind of wanted doesn't to go anywhere either. He gets so he gets the like their aliases from this. Like, all right, what do we do with that? You know, it's the same shit as Freddy died by fire, Jason by water. How do we use that? We don't use that. Mm-hmm. Why well, do we that's say how they? That's how they figure out um, that they're going to be with Ken Foree because Ken Foree's name is one of those characters' names. So I'm sure if they just, kind of, I'm sure if they just keep flipping through that fucking photo album. I'm sure they'll find they photos found of him in there. Guarantee right. Ken Foree is in there doing some like wobbly H shit with Sid Haig and <laughs> a couple of those pictures. I just feel like uh, if I mean it is like a small amount of uh, exposition, but like. If if for anything else, I think it's for Rob Zombie to tell the audience. I hate critics. You guys, you, well, like you guys are like obsessed with Captain Spaulding and and Otis uh, Driftwood and whatever, but you don't know shit about um, oh, Groucho. He's trying to, you know what I mean? It's kind of like it's kind of him being like, I got it from this, you fucking goons. Like you think, you think he's trying to flex his cinematic like knowledge? Maybe a little bit. Mm. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a little, a slight ego stroke. Like, I'm clever, and I'm gonna like, and you know, <laughs> I'm this clever. Is why I'm damn clever. it! <laughs> yeah, so give me the credit I deserve. Just maybe just a little bit of an ego stroke for himself. Uh, it, it's know? a lot of one. When you have when you have to point it out, it kills the meaning of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you should just be able so to sit I've on your thought that, should be able to sit on your silence there and go. Those who know, no. Those who don't. Yeah, we'll see if they figure it out, yeah. But no, he's like, God damn it, they have to know! <laughs> there are things that uh, you and I have been sitting on for, you know, five plus years of deep cuts that we've said, and then we've never spelled them out for anyone, because we're like, eventually someone's gonna, like, get that. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're not and Rob Zombie, he's like, I, I can't do it subtly, I got to beat the fucking shit over your head I gotta <laughs> rub it in your face God. Well, you know so and that's why we need to we need to see the monsters even you know even though I'm not looking forward to it because we'll save that for a uh, uh, first time show and we'll just make that a, a one of the YouTube videos we'll do a live commentary first time watching <laughs> oh boy oh yeah I, I just gotta see if he can do a film without doing what you're saying, like beating you over the head with his references and whatnot, because um, for this movie and for, you know, because he's so obsessed with those 70s uh, exploitation films what, and that, what that he, violent gritty. It's his era. It's what he knows. So, I mean, I can't yeah. I can't fault him for that, even though it's I, I kind of still do. Like, what, what 70s trash are you going to be unearthing on this new movie, Rob? Right, yeah just kind of his well yeah He's just gonna like, go back to it i like well i guess they would probably do the same shit for us They're like oh something else from the 80s with synth huh mm-hmm. <laughs> wedding in hawaii real original real original <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh you guys like blue and pink and uh synth wave <laughs> yeah fucking yeah <laughs> stranger things rip off <laughs> like we've been doing this before that was a thing i still haven't watched any of that yeah I also I've seen some. I watched one like, episode and then I was like, "All right." Yeah. For the time my daughter was watching Stranger Things, boy, the '80s was the coolest. She you had to dress Still like is. that and everything, and and now you know it's like, "Oh, that's so old." I'm like that was five years ago style. Like no, that was about forty. <laughs> 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 you know, uh, and we just hang on to it because we like it. So. Yep. We didn't need a TV show to to remind us that we like the 80s. Yeah. Even the youngest <laughs> tried watching Stranger Things. I don't think she finished the first season. I think she did a mm. couple episodes because she just got into D&D. And she knew that was an aspect of that show. So it didn't, didn't even keep her interest for very long. Yeah. So I, I don't know. We have some listeners who have uh, you know finished it all the way through. Snarls. Uh, Dylan, who plays Tapehead, is a massive Stranger Things fan, so um, he's he's tried to sell me on it multiple times. I don't have Netflix, so I would have to buy them all. And uh, that's how we got the first, I think, two seasons is on disc. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've even seen the other ones put out on disc yet, so I, I don't even know if they're all available yet, or if they're done, or if it's still going. I don't know shit. Don't know. 
Yeah, I have no idea. Honestly, don't really care. <laughs> it's kind of how I was with Walking Dead. Eventually, I just said, you can do whatever you want. I'm not watching. Yeah, I, I, I got that with the, the Walking Dead. It definitely hit me with the Marvel movies. I think with the second yeah. Avengers movie, uh, seeing it in the theater. At that moment, at that point, I was still I was on board with everything. And then they were literally doing shit that was involving the show, like a TV show they were doing, like the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something like that. And I'm like, oh, I have to watch the show to know. I was like, I am I got to step out. Mm-hmm. I got to go back yeah, to was... ultra casual. I can't go moderate on this anymore. It's too much work. I was done around, I don't know, Ant-Man maybe. Like there was a there was a point and I was just like, you guys go ahead and go without me. I'm, I'm good. I'm not going to follow Imagine. bit by bit by bit. I'm just going to pick and choose here and there spots. Mm-hmm. Hither, hither, and tither. Um, man, I'm trying to think. We covered the opening, which is probably like one of the best openings. Um, Getting great use of Midnight Rider. Great, oh, yeah. great double there with the 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 like freeze frame shots here and there of telling the story. The very mm-hmm. ultra seventies, you know, title screen reminds me a lot of uh, from Dust Till Dawn as well. Oh yeah, really going Definitely. for that that aesthetic. Uh, we have more Sid. It's always a good sign. We have the power struggle between him and uh, Otis. Yeah, and Baby is just kind of jumping around, instigating between the two. We get the tootie fucking fruity, which I think that's that's probably another thing. It's a big cultural impact from this is not being able to say tootie without fucking fruity Mm -hmm. oh yeah that became like it's everywhere there are shirts yada yada like um i think our very first autograph from sid that that my wife got says tootie fucking fruity like uh, you know of course like i don't think i even became i don't even think i talked to him about the movies i just talked to this talked to him because i was like i want to be like I'm not really a huge, huge fan of the movies, but I love your work in them at least. Mm-hmm. I know we talked about being a hypno, like a licensed hypnotherapist, and all of his like side gigs and things that he was doing. I did get the picture of him like doing the double flip uh, from the first movie when he's getting held up at gunpoint, <laughs> which I could have done. I could use more of that. I could use more him in clown makeup in this movie. We get some, but not enough. Yeah, uh, they yeah, it's very reserved. Like we have the Captain Spaulding's TV commercial where he's, you know, in full garb or whatever, and then um, his sex he's, scene he is this, fantastic. Oh, it's real good. You <laughs> totally see Sid's balls, man, one hundred percent. Those are his balls. Dreaming that he's around. dreaming he's with a a lovely lady of the evening, and then when he comes to, he's he's got his regular everyday woman. He's like, how oh, didn't you get enough last night? Dick Dragon still like hurts. Spastic mongoloid geek. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, going back to meeting Sid, I'm pretty sure I talked to him about the. Um, there was like a a Vietnam movie he did in the 70s, and like he he kept having to like come out of the water, and then he'd like pull out this pouch, and he had to snort a rail of coke, and he was talking about how, you know, obviously. He wasn't snorting coke, but he was snorting um, crushed up B12. Oh, I was gonna say, it's and, they, and they sugar. did that like it's delicious. They did it, they did it like ten times. Ah. and then after you know, he's like, I'm in cold water, like, cold, but my legs are like hot, like I'm starting to feel hot because he was he's got, taking so much B12, like concentrated B12. <laughs> he's got that predator blood piss probably for months. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's B complex. I think regular B twelve, your your P is fairly normal, but B complex, yeah, your <laughs> yeah. piss is like scary. It's worrisome <laughs> to other people who happen to see it. Like, the fuck is wrong with you? I'm like, no, it's- you dribble on the toilet seat and it looks like <laughs> fucking radioactive waste. <laughs> do, 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 do. What the yeah, hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> one uh yellow motherfucker but if you if anybody listening has not taken b complex go go buy some i mean it's really good for you but and i love just taking that especially if i marvel yeah especially on like weekends where i've got to be up a lot and moving around like it, it doesn't definitely gives me an extra a tidbit of boost that i would yeah. rather take over an energy drink uh, anytime uh 
We're talking about meeting Sid. Uh, I didn't talk to uh, Bill Mosley either a great deal. I think I was with the wife, and she did most of the uh, interactions when we went to meet him. But uh, another guy who's 180 degrees different than any character that he plays in these movies. He's uh, just a quiet, you know, well-educated, just soft-spoken guy. Mm-hmm. And I think we talked to him about his uh, like his college days or something. I don't don't remember exactly, but... Boy, you couldn't find a further guy than what he portrays in the cinemas. No, he's he's insanely intelligent. He's a very, like, well-read, super cool dude. And then, like, yeah, you look at him in movies and he's so chop top. And then, like, his, <laughs> you know, his corn bugs, his, like, punk band with Buckethead is crazy bat shit insane music and then you meet him and he's like just like super chill he collects uh latex masks like he oh yeah he's like he has extensive like a, mask collection he instagrams mm-hmm. that shit all the time of new yep. ones that he's got then he brings some of those to adam green's uh, scary sleepover yeah yeah <laughs> i see some of my favorites <laughs> He's just, he's a, a quirky dude who's a dad, you know, a husband, a, a guy who rakes his lawn, you know, he's just, he's just a normal, super cool dude. And that I think, you know, cause that was my first convention 2013. And we've brought this up a few times, like after a while, when you're going to these conventions and you see people just freak out on these guys like oh man oh this dude chop top definitely saw that happen yeah and and you know then you get like a glimpse of their real personality you're like boy you like obviously you like meeting fans and stuff but there's so much more to these people that it's it's almost to me feels shitty to go up to them and be like bro night of living dead 90 whoop de doo like how about like I don't know any other topic of discussion. I don't know. It just it feels so weird to me. Yeah. Now, after being yeah, like when you when we met Leslie Easterbrook for like the second time at that. Uh, oh yes, at the Slash and Bash. Slash and Bash, and just talk to her about like life because I was you know work trying to break into working on film sets and we just talked about like getting into the industry and things like that and just just have sweet normal conversations with people and it just felt so much better you know like you leave being like i could sit down at a table and have like a glass of iced tea with her like and you know like i could you know i mean but, like you just i could but i definitely was telling her like i loved you in police <laughs> academies and yes, then she's in yeah. another i can't remember the name of the other movie i think for a fraternity vacation something like that where she's she literally has some scenes where she is just wearing like this uh, nighty. It's a head to toe nighty, but it's about onion skin thin. So mm. I've seen everything from Miss <laughs> Miss Easterbrook, and it's fantastic. Is that in the Discord? <laughs> uh, might be. Ain't gonna be hard to find. Put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. And uh, all of that, like we talked about when we talked about Texas Chainsaw 3D, makes you appreciate a movie a little more when you can have these like kind of down to earth interactions with these people. And again, I was a massive geek for this movie to begin with, but after meeting everybody, and you when you rewatch it, you just kind of feel like a fly on the wall, like like you're not really watching the movie, you're watching them make the movie. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of have that extra. Yeah, you have the glimpse behind the curtain. Yeah, like you had been standing by the camera while the scenes were going on, and um, it just—it's fun. It's more fun after you've had those types of interactions, for sure. Yeah, it had some layers to it that you—you'll enjoy it on that on that aspect. Although it's. Still not one I get to too often, but of course this is very much an after 9 p.m. movie as well, so even if I wanted oh, yeah. to, I can't. It's a stiff drink of a movie, cool. no matter what. It's an Everclear shot of a movie. Yeah, it's hardcore. Um, and it and again, like even even though you said like the ending, you love how that ends and, and the way it plays out and everything, but like it's 
it's still kind of a downer of an ending, even if they're the bad guys. Like when you get done with the movie, <laughs> yeah, yeah. almost every time I, I, I like I'm happy. I'm like, woo, yeah, that was fun. And then then I'm like, but now like I'm also sad. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's oh, so they're weird. dead. <laughs> yeah. And that riddled cor- three corpses in that car just probably plowed right into those. Park cop cars too, so it's probably explosions galore and <laughs> blood and armpits hanging from trees and just a mess. Yep. Goes like through the guardrail and then like down the mountain, yeah. just rolling and exploding. Exploding <laughs> mid fall too, like doesn't hit anything and explode. Explodes mid fall. O'Doyle rules. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. Oh man, I'm trying to think. Uh, I guess we really didn't cover like um, William Forsythe too much, just a, just a smidge. Like <laughs> he's 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 William Forsythe. He kind of not that he's not in a bad way, but he kind of is the same in most movies he's in. He has the same kind of inflection, sound, and he always slicks his hair back too, which is even mm-hmm. stranger. Uh, he's the same in Deuce Bigelow as he is as, as in this and in The Rock. Like he's just the same guy. But he's he's great, and what a weird what a weird quirky guy he is in real life too. Mm-hmm. He is a very he dresses like a hobo. <laughs> yeah, he really, like cut off sweatpants and like a vest. And like if you didn't plain, yeah, if you didn't know he was in for a convention in town, you would think a homeless guy just wandered into the fucking hotel room. You're like, get out of here before I call the police. <laughs> like, get out of here, cracky. Yeah, yeah. get the hose Long, on him. <laughs> stringy gray hair, like a plain black stock and hat fucking half broken flip flops like with that like who are you? that that Marty McFly vest in the middle of summer too it's mid July in the midwest it's 100 degrees outside not to mention he drove up to that convention in a fucking semi without a trailer like just a <laughs> like he just bummed like, a ride there yeah, like pulled up in that white little semi and i'm like that's William Forsythe, and my wife's like, "That's a trucker, you fucking retarded." Like, it, <laughs> I'm like, no, that's. It wouldn't. It wouldn't have shocked me any less if you rolled up on a unicycle, right? <laughs> like a hamster ball. Yeah, like, <laughs> he's just a strange feller, and he was yeah. hanging out in the bar all weekend. There's plenty of photos of uh that. This, that was also the year I got married at that convention. So there's photos with. The, the wife, him, and Ken Foray just hanging out. And it, was like, it makes it seem like we lived, lived the coolest fucking lifestyle right. for those three yeah, days. And see, that's where we got spoiled because that was our first convention. Oh. And then, like I said, he pulls up in that semi and then like walks up carrying a case of water. And we just shoot the shit with him. And then like two hours later, we're in the bar. He's in the bar. And he's like, what are you drinking? And I'm like, Sprite. He's like, get this man all the Sprite he can drink. He like, <laughs> was buying me Sprite, and then we were, we're playing pool together. And this I'm like, man, all the this Sprite is Sprite you can drink. I'm like, this is the coolest fucking thing that's ever happened to me. I'm playing pool with, with fucking William Forsythe. He's <laughs> Open been bar killed by Sprite, Steven Seagal. Dude. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's just the craziest shit ever. Um, and uh, Been chasing that dream ever since. We really have. It's like it's like when the first time you get high on heroin, right? What do they call that? Chasing the dragon or whatever. Like uh, living on the edge of a lightning bolt. Uh, right. <laughs> you can't can't get that feeling again, no matter how much heroin you do. I mean, I don't know. I literally had that heroin. the other day because as of this recording, the uh, new Ghostbusters trailer has dropped, and I'm like, and, and the biggest pop for me in the whole movie is like, Ah, Ernie Hudson, that guy was in my wedding party. Mm-hmm. Sidebar, that looks fun. It does look fun. I'm okay. I'm I'm ready for it. Let's go. I seen a couple of folks that posted about it and they're like, I don't know about this, Wayne. I was like, this looks fine. This looks fun. I think this might be yeah. more fun than the afterlife was. Just, you know, get over yourself and be happy we got another Ghostbusters movie. That's you know, I was like that when we got the female Ghostbusters, and that's not a popular opinion. I mean that ain't a great movie, but it's fun for what it is. I didn't and, have an uh, opinion about it, and then uh, yeah, I watched it with you and I was like, This is fine. Yeah, it's fine for what it is. It's just a spin off Ghostbusters, and you just deal with it. Like, they got proton packs, they got an Ecto 1. Close enough. Like, you know what I mean? That's. Whatever. <laughs> so, I'm with this one. I'm ready. Yeah, man. No idea what Rob Zombie will have next for us. Who knows? Rob Zombie's Ghostbusters. Shit, he may go back to this well yet again, even though oh. he's just got. 
you know, two of the three rejects now, but shit. Gets a divorce, only has Otis, just makes the Otis movie. I mean, he does. He did this move Richard Brake into that role in the next movie, so he could just go down that route. Not like Richard Brake has a whole lot going on at the moment that I know of, so mm. never say Sidebar. never, I guess. Uh, I know we'll, we'll talk a lot more about Richard Brake in two weeks when we cover the next <laughs> entry, but um, sidebar on him. That dude is fucking talented. I really, <laughs> like, and I had zero interest in meeting him. He was at the convention. Yeah. And the wife uh, was interested. Zero interest. Him and like, uh, no. Jeff Daniel Phillips. She was super into Jeff Daniel Phillips. Both of those guys, I was like, eh. Yeah, like. I'll walk with you. Did not. <laughs> Did not uh, even look at Richard Brake. And then after that, um, really like watched 31. And I was like, I don't really like care for this movie, but he's good. He is the, he's the, but he is fucking awesome. And he reminds me a lot of Anthony. So um, he very, I, he very much takes the role of Sid Egg over mm-hmm. for the third movie well. Yeah. And, uh, Man, yeah, you and I both, we have to revisit that. and Our second watching officially. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm interested <laughs> to see. I'm interested, but I'm also not, like, Psyched. excited. <laughs> right. Because yeah. I remember not, I was just like, what? I'm not I, having a great time. I remember just one thing, and it was a hang-up, and I'm sure it'll still be a hang-up. But we'll, mm-hmm. we'll see. I know what it is, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but... Uh, I suppose we've rambled and we've, you know, gone off track a few times and and well, came back. What but, else is new? Right, and that's just how we do things. But uh, now that we're done babbling about what we like and dislike about the movie Evil, what does that mean? It's time to go all all in on the negative sides with the Amazon one star reviews. Hated it. Slow hand. December 4th, 2021, one star, horrendous. OMG, thank goodness it was free. Guess they can't get people to pay for it. Why do I got to pay for a movie from 2005? (laughs) The, The next paragraph really is different. That throws me. Watch Withering Heights from 1938. To Kill a Mockingbird. Babe. Arrested Development. West Side Story. The best of the best horror movies. The Haunting from 1963. Fantastic. Primo. Scary. What? It's the... The Descent into Madness. Yeah. Wuthering Heights. To Kill a Mockingbird. Babe. (laughs) Arrested Development. Yeah. The TV series. We're, We're all over the place, man. He's just looking at, like... You may also like, like, <laughs> down at the bottom. Yeah, that, that dude just has a dartboard of just every movie probably made and just like, <laughs> Mockingbird, oh, the rest of development, and Babe. What the fuck? Yeah, Babe, sure. As in, like, the talking pig movie Babe. I don't know any other Babe, so it I sure also don't, so. Has to be. Um... <laughs> Dave Stultz, not to be confused with Dave Schultz, slap her around the world, Dave Schultz, February 9th, 2015, <laughs> one star, worse than Geely. Whoa. I was astounded at how horrible this movie was, dumbfounded as to why anyone with any shred of sense would fund it, and constantly astounded as I experienced the movie get worse and worse. The writing is atrocious. The worst hack writer injected with a bucket full of Thorazine would have done a far better job. Thorazine? The characters were flat and boring. Yes, very good. They are creepy and evil and sadistic, but there's nothing compelling or interesting about them. If you could give this movie a negative rating, I would. Do yourself a favor and take a melon scooper to your eyeballs before you accidentally expose to this monstrosity. Good God, that dude is angry. <laughs> Very angry. I've seen most of Geely. Not terrible. I'm just like, I. Is that Kevin Smith? No, that's he did Jersey, Jersey Girl. Girl. Okay. Geely is just the like in the height of Benifer. It was, it was Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez. Uh, like he's a wise guy, I think. 
I've just seen bits Man, and pieces of it, and I'm like, I don't, nothing about it was like, this, I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> it's not Halle Berry's Catwoman. No, no. And I haven't seen all that either. Me neither. That's beside the point. Lisa B, December 4th, 2019, one star, waste of time, waste of time. Horrible acting, just a bunch of vile crap. Not a well-made and clearly cheap movie. Sounds like I could do that probably like Vince McMahon. That's what I was thinking, yeah. <laughs> mm, the waste of time. Horrible acting. It's a bunch of vile crap. You're fire. Not a well-made and clearly cheap movie. We make movies. <laughs> Ian Gonzalez, on September 6, 2020, one star, bad. I don't ever write reviews, but I hated this movie. So I had to. Still, House of Thousand Corpses rules. Okay. All caps on rules or just exclamation? Just an exclamation point. Yeah. Sure. Uh, sure. Jeff slash Rowena Holt. Maybe it's oh, a, it's a joint account. Yeah, definitely the sign of a stable relationship when your mm. Amazon account is a shared account. Who are you <laughs> fucking with on Amazon, dirty talker? <laughs> January third, twenty twenty. Jeff and Rowena Holt say, "Sorry, one star. Sorry, I watched it. <laughs> Very graphic horror movie. Sorry, I watched it." Who's sorry though, Jeff or Rowena? I'm we'll sorry, Jeff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry I took the movie. <laughs> <laughs> They're divorced now. Yeah. Karen, October 26, 2019. One star. Oh, Devil's Regrets DVD. I'm sure she meant to say rejects, but it's R E G E C T S. Devil's mm. regret, regrets. <laughs> this movie came on time, however, it wouldn't play. Bogus! <laughs> Bonus points for using the word bogus, though. All in caps, bogus. Mm. Bogus. 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 Brenda, June 12, 2019. One star did not order this! <laughs> you, you might be... Someone might be hating you to kill you. Yeah, if, if Devil's Reject shows up, most of the time I say be happy, but I, I'd probably like start locking your windows. Uh, I, hmm, I should move. <laughs> Is this a threat? <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, what are you trying to say? Own you too Copy strong? Devil's Rejects and like a soap on a rope show up? Like, <laughs> I'm definitely I don't know. moving. This is impressive. On November 26, 2013, the entire state of Florida <laughs> says one star. Not my type of movie. Sorry. That ain't my brand. I like oatmeal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry, I did not care for this movie. I had a friend at the house. He wanted to watch this movie. He liked it. As a woman, for me, not so much. <laughs> so the state of Florida is a woman. Hmm. Grabbing at those oranges. Yeah. Rondale Dale Branch, September 14, 2016. One star. Horrible condition. Disc was not even in the case. <laughs> Just got a busted up case. <laughs> I feel that that is the the real Devil's Rejects experience in DVD right got, there. Got the fucking at a yard sale at a trailer park. It's just fucking. You crack open the case and just sand falls out of the case. <laughs> Yeah, it's all like sticky from like baby food. And <laughs> it's like hair stuck in it and shit. Yep. Ugh. Henry Begath Begathol Begathol Henry Begath whatever. April twenty six, twenty fifteen. One star. Strictly porn. <laughs> this movie should be rated XXX and oh, as porno. Should not be sold these to anyone with a child. These people, man, like. I get that it's, you know, gratuitous, but in the grand scheme of things, this ain't that, like, I, we've seen a billion times worse, like, sexual content in just over-the-counter normal movies, like, Basic Instinct, 
is in a five dollar bin Walmart DVD, and it's like yeah, I, worse than this, really. You know, this lady is like, if I was like, you want to buy the Devil's Rejects, and you got to sign these consent forms. You mm-hmm. have a child, I see. Uh, you're outlawed from buying this film. <laughs> Comes with like a barf bag, and like you got to be put on a watch list, and like yep. all this stuff. Uh, now, smile for the camera photo. <laughs> but on the weird website, now, Henry's website. In the file. Yep. <laughs> and to rapid fire round out the uh, one stars, here's just three three quick ones from uh, Michael. One star, December 18th, 2016. Boring. Rondell makes a return on December 17th, 2016. One star, disturbing. Mm. And G Man on January 12th, 2017. One star, garbage. Fucking Elliot Ness himself, man. <laughs> Garbage, disturbing, boring. Boring, disturbing, garbage. That it, I just boring doesn't work for me because I never Ooh. when I'm watching that movie I never feel bored. Yeah, I've I've definitely had confusion. Lit, there's a litany of emotions. Boring, boring is yeah. never one of them. Yep, I can de- you can definitely like that's the best positive spin I could say. Like I was not bored. Mm-hmm. Disgusted at times. Confused. Laughing at others, but you, but you can't look away. But, uh, yeah, I was certainly not bored. It's so. like uh, rolling past a an eighteen wheeler that smashed a lady on the highway. You <laughs> go through all those emotions, but you can't look away. <laughs> Truth. Uh, well, now that we're done with the Amazon one star reviews, evil. What does that mean? Time to play the game. Uh... Play the game. Time to play the game. It's all about the game. And how you play it. Son, if you say another derogatory word about Elvis or President my presence again, I will kick the living shit out of you. <laughs> uh, get this Hollywood loving pussy out of my face. <laughs> Quiet down, son. That man's a guy. That man's a national treasure. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> son look around would i be surprised <laughs> wrong movie uh but that's right it is time to play the game and if you're new here welcome but you're probably scratching your head asking yourself what is the game well the game is a deep cut in and of itself where you got to pick a prop from the movie that we are covering but it can't be a well-known prop and since we're covering devil's rejects i really still am struggling with what would be a well-known prop just pick something <laughs> let us know discord on the comments on this patreon uh youtube facebook somewhere where anywhere wherever somewhere over the rainbow shout it let us know shout it from the rooftop we'll probably hear you yep. uh i'll call you <laughs> yep um i think i went first two weeks ago evil All so right. i'm just gonna i'm gonna serve the ball to you and let you pick first I'm gonna take the shotgun that Otis passes uh, Sid, which I apparently I heard was a impromptu move from uh, Bill Mosley as a sign of like, here you're you're the the tip top dog here because it's been the feud between on between the two on who's in charge in here. Uh, I guess that was his idea to pass the shotgun, the big gun to Sid. Be like oh at the end yeah, of the shootout yeah the passing of the torch of like you're you're the you're the top dog which apparently when he fired that shotgun because it wasn't playing for that way <laughs> it fucked up uh sherry moon zombies hearing for a while mm-hmm. yeah i saw that in the making of she's like I, nope we gotta stop i can't hear <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do another shot sherry what how many times i gotta tell you stop shooting that next to my ear uh you've seen black hawk down right once yeah, that, that happens in Black Hawk Down. They keep <laughs> keep shooting next. You gotta stop shooting next to me. I think I'm going deaf. <laughs> then, he, then he does it again. He's like, ah. <laughs> and it's like going stone cold with it. Like, I need the shotgun. What? Twelve rounds. What? Six shooter. What? A revolver. What? A Mac militant. What? Night sticks. What? Handcuffs. <laughs> Non-lethal rounds. <laughs> yeah, shoot a beanbag at Johnny Knoxville's belly button. <laughs> Rocket power grenades. <laughs> uh, it's interesting that you picked a shotgun. 
Um, because my prop that I was le- and I thought we were going to pick the same one is oh. um, Ken Foree's water pistol <laughs> shotgun. Ah, if I was going to take something from Ken Foree, it'd be his bowler hat. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, you know, so if if you're gonna if if we say I can't have a shotgun because you took a shotgun, my other pick is going mm. to be Michael Berryman's um, apron when he's vacuuming, which is probably my all-time favorite scene in this movie. Uh, we didn't even bring it up. I just love that he because he he has a very distinct look. If you don't know Michael Berryman. And, everybody, uh, everybody knows Michael Berryman. If yeah, you don't he, know his name, you've seen him. Mm-hmm. And he looks um, violent, wrinkly, and that's <laughs> like that's the thing too about Rob Zombie. He has a lot of fun with stuff like that. Taking a character who's known for playing one type, one archetype, and then casting them in something completely different. And Michael Berryman is not threatening in the least in this movie. He's comic relief. He's very funny. And I, I love that sequence when he's vacuuming and he's got that like pink frilly robe on or whatever that is, that <laughs> apron. And, and again, the furthest guy from anything he's ever portrayed in real life. Like such a nice guy. And like his Instagram posts and Facebook posts, he just, he's just posting like pictures of butterflies. And Wholesome. Shit. Yeah. So uh, dogs. If, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong, someone out there who's listening probably knows. So, um, like Dolph Lundgren, you know, he's like a rocket scientist. Like Dolph Lundgren in real life is a, <laughs> yeah. a, a wicked smart dude. I feel like Michael Berryman is not like Dolph Lundgren level, but like very, very smart. Like some kind of degrees in in um, something <laughs> like like parapsychology, like something s- science related. I could be wrong, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, also very soft spoken nice guy oh yeah crazy the guy that would give you an autograph as opposed to charge for one yeah super sweet but uh, yeah I I gotta have his apron cause man (laughs) 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 droids boss they're called (laughs) droids all those those nerds wanna fuck princess Leia right I'd fuck her (laughs) yeah he's like she's onto something there (laughs) yep absolutely <laughs> so that's my prop it's it's odd different um maybe some of those big 10 penny nails that they that uh jesus are railroad know, spikes that they nail them to the chair with maybe those would be kind of rad to have laying <laughs> the, around the staple gun <laughs> <laughs> is this tommy dreamer's staple gun who's to- who's a uh, staple gun is this <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure someone in Philadelphia is, was missing a staple gun that that, that <laughs> week. Oh, Lord. Well, I suppose we should probably get going because, after all, there's a lot of movies out there and somebody's got to watch them. So why not us, right? Just in case anyone's interested, I think I'm going to be wanting some ice cream in about 10 miles.